Hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Kim Dent, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I live in Maryland Heights, Missouri. Um, I'm married to my wonderful husband, Rick, and we have two kids who are both married, Kyle, who's married to Kelly Jane, and Kelly Nicole, our daughter, who's married to Mike. Um, I have been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 21 years now, which seems crazy to me because when I started in 2001, um, I told my husband, I just want to do this for the discount. And it has grown and grown and grown. And 21 years later, I am um, loving it just like I did the first day that I signed up. So that leads me to my next little commercial. Um, during celebration, which is just, we just have it now for 11 more days. It's over on August 31st. There are, um, a couple of benefits, um, to joining or s joining my team during this time. And the best benefit is when you sign up during celebration, you not only get to pick $125 worth of product, you get to, uh, $125 worth of product for $99. Um, and it's whatever you want, um, but you also get a beautiful planner organizer that is available just till the 31st. You also get to be on my team. Um, we are called the St. Louis Card Man Girls, and I have girls um, who come to my meetings. You don't have to come to my meetings, but we gather once a month at Zion Lutheran Church on Dorset Road in Maryland Heights, Missouri. I also have a couple of long distance um, girls on my team. The farthest one is Kathy. We'll see if she's tuning in tonight. She lives in North Dakota. So um, you don't have to live in the Maryland Heights area to be a part of my team. Um, the second perk of celebration is that you can um, pick if you spend 50 or 100 dollars in uh whatever you want there are items in this little celebration catalog as well as they just added 10 new items um, that you can choose and i'll be talking about them later um, and then the third benefit is if you're interested in there's a um, interesting stamp a pomegranate stamp that is only available if you uh place if you place $300 worth of orders or you collect $300 worth of orders. So that's my plug. I just want to remind everybody that um, celebration is going on and it's going to go away soon on August 31st. So how is everyone? Have you had a wonderful weekend? I saw some names going past really quickly. Hi, Gail. Let me see. I'm going to sync my laptop. I've had a great weekend. We got to spend, we got to go uh, out to lunch with some very dear friends today after church and got to see the new home that they're um, working on. So that was fun. Um, and then I got to come home and stamp and see a little bit of the baseball game. So can you tell me if you Cardinal fans that are watching, how did the Cardinals do today? Let me know while I'm working on this. Did they win? If Jan Foss is on, I know she'll know. Hi, Sandy. Hello, Chris. Does anyone know if the Cardinals won? <laughs> Yay. And, oh my goodness. It doesn't look like I'm sinking tonight, girls. Oh. Facebook's been a little funny, or my laptop has. Hi, Jill. Maybe it's down here. Nope. Mm. Boo, what is going on, Facebook? I can see. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Jill. Jill, I'm going to show the cards that I made uh, last weekend at stamp class. So I know you asked. That was a request of yours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't you love technology? <laughs> Hi, Kathy. I was just talking about you. Kathy, I know stamps cards all the time for those soldiers. 
<laughs> well, the show must go on. I don't, I can't quite figure out. Oh, now I know. Am I live on my personal page, I think? <laughs> well, if you all would be so kind, um, let's see, I guess I'm going to continue because I can see. I was wondering, I have a cousin in Pennsylvania. So, Nancy, now I know why you were watching. <laughs> I was like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hmm. Let's see if I can share this to the group. Hold on. I'm not sure. I'm so... Oh, okay. Let's see if this works. Thanks for your patience, everyone. So now I am I should be live on my personal page. I did this one time, other time and on the group page. All right, so all my friends from high school and my family and relatives, I was, yeah, so I've gone live on my personal page. Oh, all right. It's always something, isn't it, girls? We're going to do this thing because I have a lot to share. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to flip my camera down and I'm going to show you uh, what we, uh, what some swaps, I'm still a little um some swaps that we uh that i got yesterday at the team meeting then i'm going to show you the cards that we made last week at my um uh, stamp class and then i'm going to show you i'm going to show you how to make two cards so for all my friends who um know that rick and i travel um because of stampin up Maybe if you tune in tonight or if you continued watching, you're going to see uh, live and in action me making my cards. This is what I do. And this is how I earn. Oh, hello, Janice. This is how I earn the trip. So <laughs> usually for my Facebook family and friends on my personal page, I go live in my group. But tonight, I guess I was a little sleepy and I've gone live on my personal page. So that's why I got friends who have, I'm like, hmm. Why is Nancy from Pennsylvania tuning in? But now I know why. So yay, maybe I'll get lots of views tonight. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, move my laptop over to this side. I am going with this because I can do this. <laughs> and let me turn this on. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay. All right, hello, April. I see you. Okay, I'm going to flip my camera down so you can see some beautiful cards and then I'll get started um, making some cards. So hold on just a second. <laughs> so um, yesterday I started saying this before I got all flustered. <laughs> um, we had our team meeting and every month we pick a theme and we swap cards. So for those of you who are watching tonight who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's kind of like swapping baseball cards. If you were a kid and you swap baseball cards, um, we swap greeting cards. This is, this is what we do, my girls, my St. Louis card being girls. And if you'll take a look, aren't these adorable? So, um, this one was made by my friend Celine, and it was made with the stamp set Best Witches. Um, she used, this is part of, this is called the Spots and Dots um, die, and that you can find that in the, min, uh, no, in the annual catalog, but they just, Stampin' Up! just added it to um, the um, offerings for celebration, the 10 new items. And so you can see those cute little polka dots. And look at this is washi tape that's in the mini catalog. Celine, um, who's not on Facebook, but I just, this darling card. She also used, this one is called, from the stamp set Jar, uh, Jar of Flowers, which is in the annual catalog. So look at that. And she even popped up this cute little frog. So that's Celine's card. This one, who I know she's watching tonight, this is Lynn Zerby's card. And this card is done with Scary Cute and Bewitching. And this is, uh, this little witchy hat 
it's got a punch that um, and then with these stars I don't know if you can see those stars are also in the punch that's in the mini catalog there's the um, pretty paper that is called gingham cottage which I love that's there and she's some dye so isn't that adorable and then my friend Gina Palumbo made this one look at this she put uh, three this three little witch hats it's from the same set that Lynn used but she's got this little witch hat on a wobble and then uh, this is some oh, help me out my friends who, who are uh, Gail Brock if you're watching this is I've never ordered this this ribbon is in the annual catalog and it goes perfect with our Halloween cards and she stamped this and did it on the inside he added some DSP and she was also so sweet she added some um, of those punched out witch hats on the hat of her envelope so I heard yesterday I know Peggy Whiteman said you know we'd say we've got to decorate our envelopes because they're um, it's no fun to have get a, a, a card in the mail and um, to have a naked we call it naked envelope so it's always fun to decorate your envelopes how adorable is that hello Barb thanks for tuning in hello mom hi Patty thank you for tuning every in everyone tonight um, all right the cards that we made and I my card that was in the swap um, I'm gonna make for you tonight so that's one of the that we're gonna do a Halloween card tonight but the last week mm, last week I had my big classes at Zion Lutheran Church excuse me and um, I was just worn out after um, stamping all weekend so I appreciate all of you understanding I took off last Sunday um, for uh, Sunday night stampin I just um, decided to take a little rest and then I also for all my regulars who tune tune in every week um, we are I'm headed to New Orleans for um, the um, a stampin up leadership event and so I will be returning next Sunday so no Sunday uh, nights no uh, Sunday night stampin next Sunday night but I promise when we get back and maybe uh, maybe a little in between so maybe I'll go live like on Monday or Tuesday because I know I'll have tons of stuff stampin stuff to share with all of you from my trip so back to this these are cards that we made at my class and we at my class we make where's the oh here it is we make five cards at each of my stamp classes so you come to Zion Lutheran Church we're on the second it's always on the second Friday and Saturday of the month unless I'm traveling or um, there's a holiday but next month September 9th and 10th um, are the next classes the first time you come to my class is absolutely free and then every uh, if you would like to come and make cards that's fine fine I've got some ladies who um, they don't want to collect all the supplies to make the items for the cards and that's perfectly fine with me because I love it when I share this um, hobby of mine with uh, people so we've got ladies who come ladies and gentlemen I'm so very proud to say who come just to make the cards so five cards for ten dollars and you get your envelopes that are included so they're ready to mail out the very next day um, and what was I going to say about the five cards or um, if you love the cards and you love the items that I use to make the cards then you could also place orders to get that so second Friday and Saturday of every month we have a blast um, there's two classes on Saturday morning nine and one so the classes are about three three and a half hours long and Friday night class starts at six so if you're interested you want more information about that please uh, send me a message and I'd love to tell you more all right um, the cards that we made this one here you go for all of those um, who are in love with hippias hippo from celebration isn't she adorable I love her I'm gonna be sad when we can, I mean I'll have it to use but after August 31st we won't be able to get that anymore so if you love hippos and we've also we talked about this yesterday if you go out on Pinterest and put in hippias hippos I've seen some uh, very talented stampers turn uh, this little hippo into a cow a black and white cow um, I used a, the stitched greenery um, die for the background I also use stylish shapes for the circle 
and for this banner. And then um, the Hippos also has a coordinating set of dies that are adorable. So we just colored this in, her in, I'm calling her her, with the blends. Because I think I painted her toenails and her fingernails. <laughs> so that's why I'm calling her her. So colored her in with the blends and then popped her up on dimensionals. So that's that one. This one is with Wild Flower Path. This, I love this card. I love the colors. If you're, if you love blues and purples, um, this is with Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky. Those are two of our new in colors and also Parakeet Party. So there's a little bit of bright green right there to pop and coordinate with the stems. So we just stamped the stem and added the three little wildflowers on top. And then we added br a brush brass butterfly, which I love those. Um, this is from Go To Greetings because I think it's always fun to send cards for absolutely no reason at all to a friend or relative just to let them know that you're thinking of them. So that one, a little bit of Wink of Stella and a little bit of the in color. What do you think about this one, girls? All my purple, purple loving girls. And then I saw, um, who said they love, oh, Allison. Yeah, this is a sweet Scotty. This is this Christmas Scotty dog. And you can see in this card, it does not look like Christmas, but that's the fun part about it. You can, um, uh, you can add, there's all sorts of little, um, <laughs> pieces to him, like the bow. And there's a cup, I'm trying to think of all the little pieces that go to him or her. And so it is called the Scr Scotty Dog or Christmas Scotty Dog Bundle. It comes with a punch. So for those of you who don't like fussy cutting, um, you can just stamp the little Scotty Dog and punch it out. This is that Gingham Cottage um, DSP. So we did have two, you could, if you came to class, you could do it in red or um, this is like So Saffron or Daffodil Delight. And um, you could make a Christmas card, or this is this one says you are always loved. Um, so it's a versatile stamp set. I also use color and contour dies right here, that adorable little scallop. And then behind it is um, gingham, the gingham embossing folder. So there's that one. Look at that cute little pearl, go little gold pearl on there. This one, I think. I'm trying to think. This one, I think everyone said this was their favorite. This is from that Soft Seedling stamp set that we used, um, I used, I guess, a couple of weeks ago. This time I used the Leaf Embossing Folder. And then um, Colleen Magnus did this uh, card that was similar to this um, where she stamped, this is one large stamp. She stamped it in, I think, one color, and then she added color with the sponge daubers. And then I colored in the stem with um, our watercolor pencil. And then um, the, these beautiful, uh, what are they called? Metal, metallic dot, dots. You, they come in copper or like a rose gold, a brass, and then the gold. And then the last card we're gonna make tonight, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is with a little bit of stamp, inks, and paper to make a very cute card. So you don't have to have, all, I said, all the bells and whistles, all the embossing folders, all um, the stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is done just with a few ink pads, one stamp set, and very vanilla, evening evergreen, and garden green. So I hope you like it. I'm gonna make it for you, and I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks along the way. All right, the first card we're gonna make tonight is my swap card. Oh, and I forgot to take it. So the theme was Halloween, and I had just uh, gotten a stamp set called Scary Cute, and it is adorable. What do you think, girls? Do you like it? I don't like scary, scary Halloween cards, but I love cute. So this one is so easy to make. I'm going to, I think, throw you some surprises and show you how easy it is to make with the blending brushes and some DSP. And what else? Shimmery. We're going to use shimmery paper for this. So give me just a second. Oh, you can't see the code. Thank you for reminding me, Jill. 
I'm going to scoot that up just a little bit. There's my host code. If you're thinking about placing a celebration order, you want to get that last order in, there we go. Thank you, Jill. 9HK7G37E. That's my host code. If you're placing an order that's $150 or more, please don't use this code. Do not use it. But if it's less than that, please use it because it helps me out. So anytime you go to my website and place an order, um, it helps me out. Um, as long as you're at kimdent.stampinup.net, I get credit for it. Um, but this is just a little extra, extra something that helps me um, get door prizes if you come to my classes or keep the costs down for uh, my classes. So that if you would use that, I would so greatly appreciate it. All right. The stamp set, like I said before, is stinking cute. And it's called Scary Cute. So look at how many little stamps you get in the set. The one thing that I love that I think was so smart on Stampin' Up's part, if you look at this little girl stamp, um, she is dressed up like a little fairy for Halloween, but this could be used, this little sweet thing could be used for happy birthday, um, for little girls, we love, you know, those little girls that love like dressing up like princesses or fairies. I thought that was brilliant. And then we've got a little vampire, a little Frankenstein. This little guy, I am not sure about this. Can anybody, I know there's an old nursery rhyme. I can't quite figure out this little guy. I He's got like a little lantern. Is there I'm missing something or I'm getting old and I can't remember <laughs> but this stamp so if anybody knows what it is what this one little guy is dressed up like please tune in or write write your in the comments so we've got bats a moon boo to and from this is the one that I'm using tonight so cute love it first bite Halloween happiness trick-or-treat you're so sweet say boo and scary on this also has a coordinate that's what I'm thinking Jill we there you go Wee Willy Winky. Good job, Jill. Runs through the town. I knew it was something like that. I just couldn't think of the first part. Thank you. Um, so this does have a coordinating set of dies with it that are amazing. Tonight, I just want to concentrate on teaching you the blending technique and um, and also using this wonderful paper that it's. it was the first time I pulled it out. So I'm going to show that to you right now. This paper is, it's so huge. <laughs> this is one of the hostess offerings in the back of the catalog of uh, our mini catalog. And I'm gonna pull that up so you can see it. So many of you have fallen in love with the little my set that is in the back of the catalog. If you order $150, you get to choose free items, which Stampin' Up! says you can choose whatever you want but you can um you could use it for stamp sets or dsp but in all of our catalogs they offer um special host rewards and this in this mini catalog it's the caroling my set so i know i i started to say many of you have fallen in love with this stamp set but also up here in this corner it's the dsp and a lot of times i hear this all the time from you and i agree Sometimes the products in our catalogs are like hidden sleepers because you kind of see it and then you kind of glaze over it. This DSP, it's called Celebrate Everything. It's 12 by 12. You get 48 sheets for each of 12 double-sided papers. Um, and it is, an, um, you would use it if you had a $150 or more order, it would cost you $18 in host rewards. The one thing I want to clarify is it does say right here $30 value. That if it wasn't um, a host reward, the, the only way you can get it is by earning it by having at least $150 in free merchandise. So you can get Stampin' Rewards. But the value of it, they're saying, is $30. But it would only cost $18 in Stampin' Rewards um, for... Uh, if you if you placed an order and you you fall in love with it like I did so the first time I used it I pulled this out and I had seen this paper but when I saw it it was 
it is 12 by 12. I just want to show you the piece that I use. Black and white. And I thought my card needed a little something, something. I wanted to tie it in with the pumpkin pie. So then I thought, I'm going to pull out my blends and color in the pumpkins. So that's what I did for this, uh, for this card. So I just want to flip through this really quick because it is so much more than what you see in the catalog. So celebrate everything. There you go. This looks like Christmas with gingerbread and some candies. Look at the other side. Looks like snow with a pink background. This one looks like waves. So I've seen this used a lot with the um, Hippiest Hippo Celebration set. And look at this one. Fourth of July. <laughs> Celebrate everything. Let's see what else we've got. See, this would be another one. You could easily color in with your blends or your markers. And then the flip side, this looks like Granny Apple Green or um, Parakeet Party. And then this one, this one is so, this kind of reminds me of retro, like 60s or 70s Christmas, or, or bright, like I'm more traditional with it when it comes to Christmas colors, but I do love, this is so bright and cheery. And then the flip side, it looks like little bows. And then this one's been used a lot on, um, I've seen demonstrators use it for um, their Halloween cards. And then a plaid. And this looks like Pacific Party. This looks like a wood grain. Here's the one that I used. So you get four sheets and then the flip side, it looks like crushed curry. So one, it looks like, it looks to me like well, not always, because this one, this one is just a pattern, as well as this one. But aren't they fun? Here's this one, fall, and then more grainy apple. And then, let's see, oh, here's more 4th of July. And I'm, gonna sh I'm getting to my favorite, this one. Oh, I love this one. This is great for birthday cards. And then it's got a cute little pattern on the back. That looks kind of like shaded spruce, maybe. So take a look, especially if you're placing those um, celebration orders. If you've got, um, if it, you need for, for $150 in orders, you'll get $15 in free merchandise or Stampin' Rewards, I like to call it, or I call it freebies, but they actually call them Stampin' Rewards. So you can uh, place that. This is good through, um, let's see, it's in our mini catalog, and it's good through the end of December. You can get that for free. So on to the card. I'm going to show you um, the kit first. So I use, well, yay, Alice, and you let me know if you're interested or you definitely want to come. All right, the card base for this cute little Halloween trick-or-treater card is uh, four and one-fourth by 11. You're going to score it at five and a half. Then the piece, the next piece is pumpkin pie, and that's four inches by five and one-fourth. Here's that piece of um, DSP that I've cut down to one and three-fourths by five. Well, thank you, Karen. I'm glad I showed it then. Yeah, I know. It's a great, it's a great packet of paper. This is the layer that goes behind the um, DSP, and this is two inches by five and one-fourth. I used a piece of three and three-fourths by five for the inside. And then this is the layer that we're using. Um, this is what we're gonna stamp on. And this is shimmery white. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little sparkle or it's kind of pearl essent. And the reason I'm using this is I feel like the when you use the blending brushes, it glides across the, um, it's, easier, it's easier to blend 
the colors on this shimmery white because it's got a little bit of gloss to it. So this, here we go with the fancy measurements, two and five eighths by two and five eighths. And then next layer, two and three fourths by two and three fourths, that goes behind it. And the last layer, three by three. So, oops, I'm gonna leave that sitting there just for a second so you can get a picture of it. If you wanna recreate it. All right, here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my pumpkin pie blend. And I'm also gonna bring in some scrap paper. So with this, it's so easy. I just took, and I wasn't being, you know, very particular, but I just took my blend. See, I'm even going out because it doesn't show with the black background. I love the blends. So this is actually dark pumpkin pie. And then this just pulls in, so it, it makes the pumpkin pie in the card pop a little bit more. But this is something, remember that you can do, especially if you own the blends. I think I feel like the blends work better on um, like coloring the, in the DSP than the markers do. Um, markers will work, but I don't think you couldn't, it would take a little bit longer to color it in because the 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 alcohol ink makes it easy for this to, you know, it fills in the image really, really quick. So see how quick I'm doing that? So remember that like when you get, Stampin' Up! carries a lot of black and white DSP. There's one right in there right now that's um, all black and white and it's floral. And it, you've got to remember, like, just add a little bit of color to it by with your blends, and make those um, make those flowers pop. Or any black and white DSP, you can add color to it. Okay. And then this is my reminder to tell you. Do you see this? It goes through. Oh, you always want to have something to protect your surface because those blends bleed, even through this thicker DSP. So that piece is ready to go. And now I'm going to bring in shimmery white <clears throat> and I want to show you what I did. I follow, um, there's an amazing demonstrator. Her name is Michelle Zindorf and she has done blending with, um, before we even carried blending brushes, she's been a demonstrator that has taught across the country these wonderful techniques in blend blending that's what she's known for and so um i watched her do a youtube M michelle zindorf is her name a uh, youtube video on a larger the 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 card uh was larger and so i've just kind of pared it down so it's this little two and five eighths by two and five eighths but she was she's so interesting and i'll tell you why some of the things that she um taught in her little YouTube video. So one of the things she did was I've just taken post-it notes and there's three, um, I think there's three of them because I wanted a little bit thicker. When I punched it, I wanted to try to catch, you know, how the top part of your post-it note ha is um, sticky. So try to catch, if you do it, the top part so you've got a little bit of stickiness and use more than one. That just makes it easy to um, easier to when you're using the blending brushes which I'll show you in a second that it's kind of stays in place so this is a two inch this is retired old circle punch we also carry the circle dies you could use that too so you could use any shape but this makes a sweet little um, kind of moon scary moon background all right I'm gonna bring in my ink pads which are Cajun Craze, Pumpkin Pie, Gorgeous Grape. That's the that's the little trick that Michelle taught. And um, Old Olive for the ground. And So Saffron. And this is for the moon. A harvest moon, I guess you would call it. So the first thing I'm going to start out with is my um, Pumpkin Pie. 
and I'm going to bring in my blending brush. My well loved, can you tell? I'm like doing this more and more on my cards. I love these blending brushes. So, how you use them is you want to, um, I like to extend my pointer finger and give it like a little bit of, I don't know, what's the word? Kind of, I don't know, keeps it steady. Now, when you do um, a blending, you always want to, you want to ink up your blending brush and start off on the scrap paper or grid paper and then go in. We're going to bring that color all the way down almost to like the ground level. And you can make this as light or dark as you would like. But what we're going to do is we're going to build color. Oop. See how nice that those post-it notes are staying in place? So that looks good. I'm going to close this up and I'm going to open up Cajun Craze. Thanks, Allison. You kind of like you're thinking, oh, why do you need all those colors? But wait, when you see the final, the end result, it's so worth it's worth it. So Cajun Craze, this is just a little bit darker than pumpkin pie. Start off and then go in and blend. Thank you for the hearts. We're just adding all sorts of tones to this. Oop, went off on my pretty grid paper. Bring that down a little bit farther. Done with that. I'm gonna bring in Old Olive. Hello, Pauline, thank you for tuning in. Oh my goodness, it looks like, let's see. <laughs> Not to grab, I forgot to grab one more blending brush. Let's see if I've got one over here. No, they're all put away. All right, I'll clean this off. Now you can wash these, but did, yeah, did you hear, I forgot to bring in, I've got lots of blending brushes, but they're in my cabinet and I wanna continue. So I'm gonna dip, I've cleaned it off. If you do wanna, you can wash these, um, so you don't need one for every color and you can see I've got a bunch, it will stain the bristles, but let it dry completely and then it's good to go. But you want to make sure after you wash it with, um, and I think I just rinsed it. I might've used a little bit of soap, but not much. It takes a little bit to, uh, for the, the brushes cause they're so dense to dry. Um, but then you can use them in all different colors. Let's see how this turns out. Okay. Now I'm going to add the ground. Start off on the grid paper or scrap paper. Oh, looks like I got a little. Try to blend it. The nice part, do you see this kind of got a little dark right there? I'm able to blend that. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to use Gorgeous Grape. I love this. It was so clever to make a spooky sky. We're going to add a little bit of that Gorgeous Grape. Isn't that fun? So clever. See, I never would have thought of that on my own. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Then I'm going to peel off my post-it and I'm going to close this up. We're going to add a little so, um, so saffron to the um, middle of the moon. She started in the middle and then worked her way out and I thought That's so clever. So it's okay to have like this white border kind of, cause it's the moon. How do you like that? All right. There's my little blending class for tonight. <laughs> I hope you learned something. Now we're gonna bring in 
memento and I'm gonna bring in my little my cute little trick-or-treaters set this to the side now the um, let's see how this oh I just re ooh, I just re-inked my memento because I wanted it nice and juicy let's see how this turns out Oh, very nice. Now, one thing I wanted to share, which I shared with my team yesterday, and I thought this was clever. For solid images like this, um, sometimes, you know, they don't turn out like as dark as you would like them. So this is still wet, I can tell. What um, Michelle recommended, I'm going to do it just so you can see it. That's pretty dark and I'm pretty, pretty happy with it, but I do want to show you this technique just if it ever happens to you. She said she always has a black blending, dark, dark base, dark basic black blending brush. Say that three times fast um, next to her. And this is the reason why she takes and she colored in and it just made it a bolder or denser black. The shimmery white cardstock has, you know, a grain to it. That's um, sometimes you'll see, you'll be able to see it when you stamp images, especially solid images. Um, and so stamping words or anything like this, if you, you know, if there's a little bit of white showing through, um, then you can always take your, if you use black, take your ba basic black and fill it in. So I thought that was a great tip. All right. The next thing I have to do is I'm going to bring in my words. Trick or treat, you're so sweet. Take a look to make sure there's ink on all the letters. Because when you get this far and it doesn't turn out, you're like, so sad. Oh, but I've got my black blending brush. Okay, let me see if I can do this without sticking my head in. Yay. And then we're going to bring in some little bitty bats. Ooh. Got a little halo there. I don't want that to show. Hmm. I wish I would have gotten more. Let's see. No, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to be happy with it because you know what happens. You start messing around and then. All right. That is the stamping that you need to do for this sweet little card. Oh, no. You know what? I've got a, let's see. I've got a white inside. So I, I told you, I think a couple weeks ago, I've got a show you that I do stamp inside my cards. <laughs> so I'm going to take <clears throat> on the outside, trick or treat, you're so sweet. And on the inside, I think say boo and scary on is adorable. And just to add a little something, something. So cute. How many of you uh, send Halloween cards? Just comment and let me know. I, I'm interested in knowing this. Do you send them out? Are they scary? Are they cute Halloween? Okay, that's the inside. And then on my outside, this is the pumpkin pie. Yeah, no, a few, yes. Jill, ah, yay, seeing it, yay, Karen. Well, I hope you like this sweet little stamp set. I also love the Best Witches, I guess it is, that little hat. And after seeing Lynn's card and um, Celine, uh, Celine's card and um, 
Gina's card. I'm so tempted to get that little cute little witchy hat. And it's got a punch that coordinates with it. Yeah, just, of course, yeah, to those sweet grandkids from the great, oh, that's adorable, Chris. To the, from the great pumpkin, like Charlie Brown. Okay, do you see this skinny little pumpkin pie? Um, if you've got good eyes and you uh, like adding a little bit of uh, color to it, I guess that is like a 16th inch larger. Um, so that's just something that I like to do every once in a while. Um, usually they're like quarter inch layers, but this is, I just thought it looked cute with a little bit of pumpkin pie right there. And then we're going to, let's see. looking for my piece of my layer of DSP on the basic black and then we're gonna put some dimensionals thanks Sandy me too and those frogs are adorable that are in that set I stamped all yesterday so um, if you've heard me talk about going to Stampin' Up! events, we um, we also swap. And so yesterday I made, I got 25 done. I would like to get a few more done. So when I come back from um, New Orleans, I'm going to have lots of cards to show you. So I stamped all, uh, well, I had the meeting in the morning. And then I had, um, got came down here in the stamp room and stamp the day and night away. It was a lot of fun. All right, I'm going to clean off my stamps because I don't want to get that memento black. Yeah, aren't the silhouettes cute? I think so too, Sandy. Now, before I go on to the next card, I know I have some girls that are watching that are... Um, newer to stamping and so I thought we would take a little commercial break and I'm going to show you how I re-ink my ink pads. I just think it's important because a lot of times um, you know you don't get to see me do that at well some of you do watch um, but when we're at class or in person so I just thought what I do today is I want to bring you this is Daffodil Delight and it is on the drier side so if you this is i just feel like whenever you order stampin up ink pads um you always want to get the reinker and this is not i did not grab the correct reinker oh hold on <laughs> hold on let's see if i can reach so um the cool the cool part about stampin up ink pads is that unlike when you go to um the big box stores, they don't sell reinkers. So if you buy an ink pad from them, whatever brand it is, you um, when the ink pad goes dry, typically then you've got to throw it out. It's no good. And for colors, like if you stamp a lot of Christmas cards, reds and greens, if you buy from the big box stores and then you use it for, let's say, 25, 50 cards, that ink pad then is, I think, no longer good if you've used it all up. So with Stampin' Up!, you can buy the ink pad as well as the reinker, and this just extends the life of your ink pad. You you know, on and on and on. So what I want to show you tonight is for my my new stampers who are watching, how I reink the ink pad is I take the reinker and I it's like little eye drops, make a little. And you can tell this one is dry because watch when it starts absorbing, you can really tell. Now I don't need to fill in the whole thing. You know, it doesn't like, it, I don't want to put ink completely, well, completely all over it because then it would be too juicy. So what I do next is um, to spread it around. This is an old gift card. This is what I can I use, or you can also use plastic spoon. Um, 
and I just take and start spreading that ink. And an important thing to remember is you not only want to do it like in that direction, see you can see where it's soaked in, it really needed to be re-inked. You want to do it like in all directions to get that ink worked into that ink pad. So that's just my little tip on uh, how I <laughs> how I re-ink. Um, I hope it helps someone out there. So, and especially it's a great tip to whenever you buy whatever you whatever color you buy with Stampin' Up, always, always, always spend the like I think it's three dollars and ninety five cents for the re-inker because this will last you a long, long time. There we go. That one is ready to go. And don't forget to clean this off. <laughs> okay, the next card that we're going to make is um, an, an easy card. And it is one that I did at my stamp class because I wanted to show my friends that you don't always have to have everything. Like you see me using, um, look, this one doesn't even have like embellishments on it. And it's a beautiful card. So this one is very simple. Um, we're using the stamp set Treasured Kindness. I told the girls um, or, and guys at my stamp classes, this typically is not my, st my style, but um, when I saw, I believe her name was Brandy Cox. She is one of our top, top demonstrators. I saw her make a card with it and I thought that's beautiful and I love the simplicity of it. It kind of reminds me, I don't know, I, this is probably kind of reminds me like a little bonsai tree. It's got a little Asian flair, I think, to it, um, which is beautiful. But yeah, it's a sweet and simple card. It comes with beautiful words. Your kindness is treasured in my heart. Thank you, thinking of you. We can always use those. Always here for you. Good friends are forever, and you are wonderful in every way, which is what I used on this card. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of two-step stamping. Thank you. Oh, Valerie. I Yeah, I thought of Valerie um, when I was making this card. So um, we're going to do a little two-step stamping with this card. And what two-step stamping is, it is a way for us to add depth and dimension. It's not just flat. And so it's like, for an example, the tree bark. We're going to stamp the outline, the detail in full strength early espresso and then this piece we're going to come in we're going to ink it up and stamp it off and then it's going to fill in so it's called two-step stamping they're meant to work together the same with the greenery this is the sun so a little bit of two-step stamping don't be afraid if you've never um, stamped with it before this is also a great um, card if you have a stamparatus this, is, this would be an excellent stamp set to have if you've got the Stamparatus. Today I'm just using my acrylic blocks. Um, the kit that I'm using is we're going to use Evening Evergreen. And Evening Evergreen is, don't usually make my cards this way, but I want it to for my very special friends who like their cards to go in this direction. So this is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and one fourth. I had to laugh. I forget. Some people, I've had more than one person say to me, I really don't like those cards that go the other way, which is usually how I, uh, which is usually how I make my cards. So I'm trying to switch it up a little bit. Little bit. Okay, Brenda is asking, hello, would watercolor work well on DSP? Um, you might be able to do a smidge, Brenda, of watercoloring, but, um, it is a thicker, um, it's thick, but I don't know how well it would hold that water. You might be able to do a little bit, but um, with small images, but I don't, my first thought, my instinct is to say no, that it, I don't think it would on a large area would work. Um, also the DSP sometimes has like a gloss on it that the the water would not absorb well so and Jill is she is our artist extraordinaire so Jill is saying no um, you can what I would use I don't know if you have a water uh, DSP in mind but um, I've heard more and more stampers use watercoloring with our thick cardstock 
Um, that's just their go-to. And s instead of watercolor paper, actually, which we sell, they're, they're using thick white, basic white, or thick vanilla. So I hope that answers your question. So Evening Evergreen. And then, um, oh, no, I took that off because I'm Gavin. Evening Evergreen. And then Garden Green is four by five and one fourth. And then we've got a layer of evening evergreen, three and a half by four and three fourths. Put that over here. This is what we're going to stamp on, three and one fourth by four and a half. Very vanilla. And then for your inside, three and three fourths by five. So very, yeah, very little cardstock, one stamp set. And then I'm going to bring in the ink pads. So we're going to use Early Espresso, Garden Green, Evening Evergreen, and Daffodil Delight. Good question though, Brenda. I'm anxious to see the project that you're working on. All right, and it's, this is a photopolymer stamp set, so I brought in my pierce mat. You always want to have some sort of... Um, push underneath with the photopolymer, photopolymer stamp sets. It, they're different than our red rubber. Um, and so I always, I just feel like you get a much better image by um, stamping with a pierce mat. Some people use mouse pads underneath. You can buy those large pads that are the size of our grid paper. I believe you can buy those like the foam, um, fun foam mats at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. But I, I recommend that you buy a pierce mat from me. <laughs> I'm just, te no, I'm not teasing. <laughs> and I think it's $5, so it's a great bargain. All right, I'm going to use Garden Green. How I'm going to work, uh, make the card is I'm going to start from the bottom and work up. So this little, and I just, re I think I re-inked all of these before we started, before I started today, so... This is going to go down on the bottom and you can see with photopolymer I can see right through it so that's going to come in handy with this next part so the next one we're going to use early espresso and now you're going to see me do the two-step <laughs> oh and I'm going to bring in that grid paper again there you can see I was working today on these cards all right so there and isn't it, it does like so People are like, why do you have, why, what's special about this? This is what happens. It's got a definite pink tone. I guess that picked it up from the, because um, we've only used it in early espresso. The, so photopolymer stamps do stain, but they still work perfectly. Sometimes um, I'll have stampers say, you know, I don't like it because I don't like the staining. But to me, it's just part of the, part of the process. So that's why it's got that funny hot pink tone to it. Okay, this is the branch, I guess, or the, no, the, what do we call it? The tr It's the tree, and it's got the branches on it. This is full strength, early espresso. And I can see through it, so I can see where I'm going to land it right on top of that grass, or whatever the semicircle is, whatever you want to call it. Isn't that pretty? All right, now I'm going to bring in, this is the fill, we call this the fill-in stamp. And I'm going to ink it up. It's a nice and juicy ink pad, but I'm going to stamp it off. And then I'm going to go right in on top of it, and it's going to fill it in. There we go. See how it filled it in so nicely? And now I'm going to do the top one. So I'm using, oh, got to close this up. I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. And I can see where I'm supposed to place it. Oh, I really want to stick my, <laughs> I really need to stick my head in, but I'm going to try hard not to. And then, there's the filler in. So same thing, we're going to ink it up and stamp it off. 
and then go in on top of it and it it layers beautifully right on top How cool is that? I love that. Oh, you know what? Oh, I did. Let's see. The words I'm going to put in. Nope, I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. And I think I'm going to use Thinking of You because I've decided I need more of those. So Evening Evergreen for the words. That's going to go right down here. I love photopolymer stamp sets for that reason. You can see exactly where they're going. Um, you, it's easier to keep them straight, I think, or to do like the layering, the two-step stamping. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in Daffodil Delight and finish up. So, so simple. And this is gonna go right behind we go so for those of you who are thinking about stamping I'd love for you to come and try out one of my classes because whether you are, are a beginner or you uh, have been stamping forever my classes are so fun and you learn something every time it's a great gathering of wonderful people who enjoy making cards and sending cards. And like I said before, you don't have to think that if you come to my class that you've got to order something. Absolutely not. I love, love, love when I have um, crafters come to my class and they're like, I'm really not into, oops, here's a bonus one. I'm really not into buying all this stuff and I'm like that is perfectly fine I'd love for you to come um, and just make the cards so there we go and then you just have to let me know that you're coming don't surprise me that's hard <laughs> because I have to make sure I have enough cardstock cut. All right, um, for the inside, hmm. I have Thinking of You. Let's see, I think I'm gonna put You Are Wonderful in Every Way, just to have something. And then don't forget to stamp on your envelopes. Who wouldn't want a cool card with like and to get the envelope and the envelope coordinate don't you love that coordinates with the inside that's so awesome there we go so I hope tonight you've learned a few things um, like I said before don't forget celebration is just going on for 11 more days If, you're, if you don't have a demonstrator and you would like to learn more about Stampin' Up! or what I do, since now I've been out on my personal page, I'm, uh, I'm hoping more of my friends understand what we do. We are, um, Rick and I are asked a lot, now how do, how do you travel? How, how are you getting all these trips? And he does a lovely way of um, describing it. I usually say, you know, I, it's a paper crafting business and I sell, the company sells cardstock and ink and uh, DSP, um, but it is so much more. Thank you, Jill. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yes, Valerie, even your postman will be jealous with a stamped envelope. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna flip this around. Thank you for tuning in. All of my friends and all of my relatives and my family who didn't tuned in tonight. Um, I appreciate all of you watching. I hope you understand now a little bit better about what I do. But like I said before, um, 
it's card making, but it is so much more. It's something that 21 years ago, if somebody would have said that um, my lovely little, my little hobby that I enjoyed was going to grow into this, I just would not have believed it. I wouldn't believe, first of all, probably a year and a half ago, somebody would have said, you're going to have a YouTube channel and you're going to be doing these Facebook lives, but COVID brought that out. So, and I'm so glad that it did because now I've spread and miles and miles where I never would have um, been able to touch people and teach people how to make cards. So thank you everyone. I will see you in two weeks with lots of goodies from the, um, from the event in New Orleans. I'll have lots of stuff to share and to talk about. So I'll miss doing the Facebook Live next Sunday night, but I'll have um, tons to talk about when I get back. So have a wonderful two weeks and God's blessings. Bye-bye.